Hi everyone, it's Brittany. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I wanted to take you all through a sew with me where I sew this lovely iris blouse by Fiber and Cloth Studio. So for this particular project, I was actually a tester for this pattern, which means I was able to um, get access to the pattern prior to its release to test out how it actually fit and came together. This blouse is a 100% zero waist design, which I absolutely love. And it's got a really cool bow tie and I love the sleeves of it. It's just an all around great everyday simple wear. And I absolutely love Alexis, the designer behind Fiber and Cloth Studio. We talk a lot on Instagram and she's just like, the sweetest, brightest, warmest energy ever. And I love her ethos in regards to sustainability and slow sewing and all of that. And so I really was honored to be able to partake in testing this blouse. There were a couple of uh, snags along the way in creating this blouse, especially in regards to my fabric selection, which was 100% on me. I don't know what was wrong. I couldn't do math the day that I sewed this blouse. like at all but i think that in the end the entire process was a lot of fun and i came away with a really awesome new wardrobe staple so for this particular blouse i wound up not doing any modifications to the pattern itself just because based on the measurements that were provided it seemed like i was going to fit into the size b pretty perfectly all right so let's get started so the first step, I have to get really low because I don't have a very high, <laughs> a very tall iPhone stand. Um, <laughs> the first step is going to be ironing my fabric. So I'm at my ironing board and that's what we're going to do first. <laughs> I probably should have plugged this in, huh? All right, so I've got my instructions here and um, basically what I need to do is actually draw out all of the various pieces onto the fabric because this is a zero waste pattern. It's not like a traditional pattern where you print out the pattern pieces um, and then pin them to the fabric. Zero waste, usually you will draw some sort of diagram onto the fabric itself. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. There is one template. Um, this is for the front and back neck, and it's the only template that was given for this design, but everything else I'm just going to draw out into the rectangles and get to cutting. All right, so my fabric is actually not the correct width for this particular pattern, um, but I do think that I can make up for that in the length. I have a lot more length than the pattern requires. What I think I'm going to do is, instead of marking out each individual piece, I'm just going to go based on the cutting layout and cut out each of the pieces and then like each of the larger rectangles and then trim them down to the right sizes. I think that's what I'm gonna do. We'll see. So hopefully I have enough material to actually do this. And if not, well, at least everything's still rectangles. So I can still use this fabric for something else and then just pick a new fabric. So I already cut out the first pattern square, which was the largest piece. And I've realized that after measuring again, definitely don't have enough of this fabric to make the pattern. So I'm going to go rifle through my stash, see what I have and try this again. I think that I have salvaged everything. Um, I have found a fabric that I've had in my stash for quite some time. I made a failed project, which I will show a picture of here. And um, I had a little over a yard left of this and I wasn't sure what to do with it. And it's a beautiful silk with lemon print, 
which I am obsessed with and so I'm going to use this instead. So it's back to the cutting table where I'm going to attempt to squeeze this pattern out of my newly chosen silk fabric. I shouldn't get my hopes up though. I'm sure you will but <laughs> based on my face but I have managed to miscalculate the amount that I of fabric that I had here as well and there is not enough all right so it's back to the cutting well not cutting board gotta go away from the cutting board it's back to the fabric picking board I'm going searching through my stash once again to try and find a fabric for this project. Oh my gosh, what is wrong with me today? I just can't do math for some reason. All right, I am back once again after searching through my stash. I have found a fabric that is going to 100% work. If it does not work, something in the universe is just off today um, because I triple checked this fabric measurement to make sure that it was exactly at least 51 inches by 52 inches. This one is 53 inches by 56 inches. So if it does not work, I don't know. I'm just gonna call it a day. Um, so <laughs> once again, I'm going to go press this fabric and come back to the cutting table and start with all of my things. And hopefully someday we will have a pattern cut out yeah i am happy to report that my math for this fabric was indeed correct yay i was able to measure out each rectangle and simply tear the fabric based on the measurements i needed i prefer this method of cutting when it comes to certain fabrics as it's more accurate assures me that my pieces will be on grain and it's super fast So I am at my sewing machine and I'm going to get started on actually constructing this project finally now that we have something cut out. Um, so the instructions are telling me that I need to stay stitch my necklines and then I'm going to be attaching interfacing because there is a button placket and y'all know everyone on this channel knows um, that I love using sew-in interfacing from scrap fabrics and what better way to make this like truly zero waste than to use the scrap piece that I was left over with from this project. So um, I'm just going to cut out some interfacing from this fabric, just a few strips, and stay stitch the neckline, attach this interfacing, and yeah, that'll be the first couple of steps that I do. Now I am going to go ahead and sew my interfacing into place along the center front edge. So I've gone ahead and folded the hem back the front edge back by a quarter of an inch and pressed it down. I basically um, just followed the line of stitching the best I could and pressed this back and now the pattern is asking me to flip it over to the right side and turn this placket edge back like so. So it's on the front side and then I'm going to pin it here and stitch right alongside here. So it's gonna look something like this. And then what happens is after you've sewn it and clipped it, you can flip it right side out and that little pointed edge is completely finished, which I love this as a technique. I think it's brilliant. So we're gonna go do that. So now that that's done, this is what it's looking like. And 
and we are going to just clip right here not through the actual seam allowance just through the tip and where I'm basically just trimming this piece of fabric up so that there's not that much bulk not that there was a lot anyway um, because this is pretty fine fabric but it should it's looking something like this and then flipping it right side out and poking out that little corner. So look at how nice and neat that looks. So this is the back and then this is what it looks like from the front. And so the next step is to press the placket towards the wrong side of the garment and pin it into place. Then stitch along the pinned edge to secure the placket to the center front blouse. So the next part of this project is asking me to press the back or front neck facing um, into the wrong side all along this like curved edge here. From experience, Pressing curved edges can be a little bit tricky. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to run a basting stitch all along the curved edge and then I'm going to lightly pull it so that it kind of eases into place so that I get a nice curve instead of like um, a lot of tucks and points and things like that. Yeah, so that's just one little trick that I like to use whenever I'm trying to hem anything that has like a really extreme curve. So I just basted everything and I don't know if you can see this, but it's already started pulling itself towards the other side of the fabric. So that's just going to make it even easier for me to fold it back and press. See, it's already like wanting to do that for me. So I don't even think I'm going to have to pull this all that much. I think I'm just gonna go to the iron and it's already been pulled in all the places that I need. Um, so I'm just gonna press it down and then it looks like attach it to the back bodice piece along the neckline edge, so. So here is the finished piece, um, pressed and everything. There is a little piece that got like a bit puckered here and that's just because it gathered and I couldn't get it to ungather at that point, but it doesn't bother me that much. Um, and the curve looks phenomenal. So it's time to pin this to the back bodice piece. And then it's time to sew it into place along the outer pressed edge. So um, I have put in the facing and it looks so good. I managed to even get out all of like the little wrinkles and bits. So this is the inside and then this is the outside. And I think it looks really nice. So the next part of this, let me cut this project, is to attach everything at um, the shoulder seams. I am, because this is such a lightweight fabric, I'm planning on doing some, let me cut this too. <laughs> I'm planning on doing some French seams. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then I think I'm going to take a break for today. Um, I'm getting a little bit hungry. It's almost lunchtime. So yeah, let's finish up the French seams for today and then I will be back tomorrow to hopefully complete the entire blouse. Okie dokie, that is it for day one. I have completed the shell, I guess you could say, of this pattern. I really did think that I was gonna get a lot further today, but the fabric thing really threw me off. Hopefully by tomorrow, this piece will be completed and I'm super excited. Okay, so it is day two of this um, Sew With Me 
for the iris blouse and I am super excited. It's less rainy today, still a bit cloudy, and I have got to work on, oh, there's a little dove outside my window. Oh, they're fighting. <laughs> So many. I'm working on attaching the sleeves and doing the ruffle. I have a necktie for this blouse to finish up and then also the buttons up the front. And I think those are the last three things that need to be accomplished. So fingers crossed that I can get those done today. Yeah, let's just dive right in. To start, I'm going to pin and then sew the short edges as well as the long edge of the necktie, leaving a space between the marked notches. So with this material, what I'm going to do in, um, instead of just leaving it raw because it's fraying quite a bit and it's semi-see-through, I'm actually going to go ahead and use some pinking shears to trim this up just so that um, hopefully it prevents it from fraying too much over time. Once the tie has been pinked, it's time to turn it to the right side, poke out those corners, and give it a good press. Then I'm going to pin one of the raw edges to the neckline of my blouse. Next, I will sew my tie to the neckline, making sure that I don't catch the upper layer. Then I pressed the remaining seam of the necktie under by half an inch and pinned it to the neckline on the inside of the blouse, effectively covering the raw seams where I just sewed the bottom portion of the necktie. So now that all of this is pinned, I'm just going to sew along the side. Um, either hand stitching it or sewing it with my machine. I think sewing it with my machine from this side. Yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. I am doing a technique called stitching in the ditch. If you've never heard of this technique before, let me explain. So with stitching in the ditch, basically what you're doing is you are stitching right in this seam line here. So in between these two pieces. And then hopefully that means it will catch here just barely so that your tie stays in place, but you won't actually see the line of stitching on this side. So yay, I have successfully completed the necktie. Is it perfect? No. Do I care? No. It's not gonna bother me. I miss a few little teeny tiny spaces, but it's not enough to undo the stitching and then redo. So this is what it's looking like from the outside and you can barely see the stitches. And then on the inside, this is what it looks like. And then, so the next step is to attach the sleeves, which I am super excited about because that means that this project is almost done. I am going to go ahead and continue on with the French seams. Um, yeah, yeah, I think that I can finish this hopefully today. <laughs>
All right, so sleeves are done. Side seam is sewn. Everything's been French seamed. So yeah, the shirt is coming along great. Um, all I have to do is flip up the sleeve. It's quite long right now. So I'm gonna flip that up, sew it down, add some elastic, add some buttons, hem. Oh gosh, actually there's quite a bit to do. Um, I always forget that <laughs> the finishing touches are super easy, but there's quite a few of them, so. Let's get to it. So right now I am flipping the sleeve hem back by one inch as per the instructions, and then again by six inches. The pattern says to flip the second portion of the hem up anywhere between four to eight inches. So I just chose something right in the middle to try out for this go round. Then I am pinning the hem into place. Here's what it looks like. Next up, it's time to sew a channel along the edge of the hem for the elastic to slide through. To create a channel for the elastic, I am basically sewing two rows of stitches parallel to one another along the inner hem of the sleeve. I'll then leave a small opening where I will slide the elastic through. Before closing up the elastic inside its channel, I need to secure both ends of the elastic together with a couple of stitches. A little something like this. Now I can close everything up. And then it's time for the blouse hem. One really cool thing about this pattern is how it incorporates the bits of scraps produced in the cutting process. For instance, this piece was from where I cut the back neckline and it is being incorporated into the hem as a nifty little detail. Now all I have to do is add some buttons and buttonholes to my blouse. I chose to use a set of my own zero waste buttons created from my own studio scraps as I thought it suited this project perfectly. And voila, my iris blouse is officially complete. I don't know what to say. Awesome, so now that my iris blouse is fully sewn up and I've had a chance to wear it, I asked myself, is there anything that I would do differently? And the answer is yes. Next time I make this blouse, and there will definitely be a next time, I think that I'm actually going to size up in this pattern just because I really like the idea of the flowy, kind of billowy silhouette. I'm really into that right now. And this feels like, even though there's a lot of ease in this pattern, I feel like I could do with going up at least one more size to really get that whoosh, whoosh. That's a word, right? Next time I would also really highly consider lengthening the sleeves and the torso, mainly to accommodate my car noodle frame. So other than that, I think that this blouse was really fun. It was a really fast and easy sew, minus uh, all of my hiccups with regards to actually measuring my fabric. I definitely see more of this blouse in my future. I think that it's just super nice and airy, and I'm really excited about being able to wear it this summer out in the garden. I'm always looking for garments that you know, cover my arms because we have lots of mosquitoes here, but also keeps me really nice and cool. And I think that this fits the bill perfectly. So if you haven't already and you really like this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and turn on the little bell for all the notifications so that if I do another video like this, you're the first to know. And honestly, would you like to sew with me again? Let me know in the comments below. And if so, what pattern do you think I should do next? I hope to see you next time. Bye. Doo -doo 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 -doo. I cannot sing.